Today we will be talking about gifted and talented services in visual and performing arts. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type those in and um, we will be able to answer those while the presentation is going on. So first we want to start by um, revisiting the definition of what um, a student who's gifted in visual and performing arts is. These are your students um, who are identified as gifted and talented in visual and performing arts that possess either the potential or demonstrated ability to perform at an exceptionally high level. These students demonstrate the potential for outstanding aesthetic production, accomplishment, or creativity in visual art, dance, drama, or music. And then we also want to look at the characteristics of um, gifted students that are artistic. When you are planning services for these students, these are just some things to keep in mind. Um, the students usually are aware of their gifts and talents. They often show a concern for developing their technical skills in these areas. Um, they're often introspective about the role of the arts in their lives. Um, sometimes they like to break from tradition or they may um, exhibit impulsive behavior. <clears throat> These students often demonstrate autonomy, their independence and flexibility, and there is usually a desire for education in their preferred domain. So we will start with some dance service options. So if you have students who have been identified in the area of dance, some possible service options that you could provide are um, opportunities for them to participate in competitions. They could also have special classes. There could be enrichment in the area of dance. There could be um, a professional dance mentor that's assigned to those students to provide a mentorship. And then also um, service options can be field trips, such as specialized field trips that may be to the Louisville Ballet or even the Kentucky Center for the Arts. Um, just keeping in mind that service options in any of the five areas, um, there's no specific amount of times that they can be offered. They just need to be offered consistently throughout the school year. Um, some options for service options for students who have been identified in drama or theater. Those students could have special classes. They could also have enrichment um, that's centered around drama or theater. Um, they could have a mentor in the field, also field trips that are centered around drama and theater. We know in JCPS that there are some Disney school partnerships and that can be utilized to um, meet the service needs of students in those schools. And then there are several uh, residencies with community theater partners that JCPS already has partnerships with, and some of those being Stage One, Actors Theater, and the Kentucky Center. They all offer residencies um, for theater. So some service options that are available for music students. Um, they could have special classes with advanced level instruction. They could be assigned a musician mentor. Um, there could be a pullout with a music specialist. Um, they could participate in all county choir, band, or orchestra. They could be a part of the Music Honor Society. And then for our high school students that have been identified um, in the area of music, they could have music theory book credit classes. And then I want to go back to the county and go to the link that is provided on the JCPS website. And it gives you more information. And if you look over to your right, it talks about the all county music festivals and band, choir, jazz, orchestra, or for percussion. And then also it has the information there for our district music instructional lead um, if you had more specific questions. So for the area of visual art, for those students who've been identified in visual arts, um, some service options could be special classes or advanced level art instruction. They could have a professional artist as a mentor. They could also have field trips related to visual art, and this does include virtual field trips as well. Um, they could be offered 2D and 3D art classes. There could be virtual or distance learning opportunities. 
And then there can also be community partnerships um, in the visual arts. I do want to go to the KET link. KET does offer um, visual and performing arts materials, online courses that students could um, participate in. So if you look over here um, to your left, there is a whole strand of different areas in the visual art that students could um, have online access to. Um, on each of those um, service options, enrichment was recommended as a service option. So we just kind of want to look at what that could look like in a school. Enrichment, enrichment is typically designed as an added feature of a school schedule where students engage in learning experiences beyond the core curriculum. So one of those could be an artist in residence. And we talked about some of the community partners that offer residencies um, for those elementary schools that have the five by five or the fund for the arts grants. Um, they will provide an artist in a particular field to come in and work with students on art projects. Um, your school could have art seminars or workshops set up periodically throughout the school year. Those could be discussion-based sessions on specific topics, focusing on advanced content in the arts or higher level processing skills. Uh, we talked about mentors for each of those areas. This is where the school would connect a student um, who may have particular skills or knowledge and interest in a certain area. And this could be a student with a visual or performing art talent working very closely or meeting occasionally with a professional artist. And then distance learning opportunities, um, we want to make sure we include those as options. And those are learning opportunities offered through computer technology with a video or online courses. And we kind of looked at that with KET. Um, independent study in visual and performing arts is another popular service option. Independent study is self-directed exploration of a topic or course of study under the supervision of a teacher. So um, the student and the teacher would um, decide what that topic would be, and then that student would be given an assignment or task to complete independently in that area. And then that can also include passion projects. Those are independent projects where students spend intentional time on a topic that they are passionate about, and then the student gains expertise on that topic and shares their knowledge through the arts. So those are also two um, other service options that we discussed. Um, visual and performing art collaboration. There are several partners in our local community through the arts, so I just wanted to take a look at a couple of these as possible ways to service those students. In dance, we have the Louisville Ballet. And the Louisville Ballet does provide outreach um, in the schools and opportunities for students to engage and participate in dance. They offer student matinees and in-school programs. So just um, something to keep in mind when planning those services for your dance students. And then we also have the Kentucky Center for the Arts. And they also as well have outreach and in-school programs as well as opportunities for students to, um, to come to their facility for other programming. Um, in the area of drama and theater, there are several community partners. Um, we have Actors Theater, Walden Theater, Kentucky Shakespeare and Stage One that um, ACPS already has many partnerships with. Um, they will come to schools and do residencies, as I mentioned earlier. And then there's also several other programs um, that students can participate in in that area. Um, in the area of music, we have the Louisville Youth Choir. We have KMEA, Louisville Youth Orchestra, and the Kentucky Opera Association. So for the Louisville Youth Choir, They also have um, several programming options in school and out of school. So this is another option um, that your school may want to explore when providing services for those students identified in music. And then last, we have our visual um, art. We have our visual art, and there's Louisville Visual Art. Yes. 
that provides several outreach programming. Um, if you go to the community outreach, there's in school um, options for you to explore. Um, so that's another good uh, resource. We also have the Speed Art Museum and the Kentucky Museum of Art and Craft. So these are all great community partners um, to look into when providing service options for our students who have been identified in vision performing arts. And then um, if your school is not already using these, um, this is a wonderful resource. KET offers arts toolkits. And these art toolkits, they have them in all four areas, dance, drama, music, and visual art. And we encourage you to explore these. But we'll take a look here if you've never um, used them, just so you can see. They have an arts toolkit page. And it kind of gives you an explanation of how to use them and what they're for. And then if you go down, um, they have one for each area. So they have lessons, videos, activities, and many things that you could use. Um, to with your students who've been identified in those four areas. And then this is just a um, visual web that um, KDE provides on possible services and service delivery options for students who've been identified um, as gifted in any area. I think we've covered enrichment. We've looked at our community resources. We've looked at um, artists in residence as a possible service. We've talked about mentorships, um, seminars, and then we also talked about specialists working with students. So this just gives some other options, but I think we've covered most of these. And then we have some um, links here to some other resources that you may want to use. Um, this PowerPoint will be uploaded to the Gifted Education Google Drive in the visual performing art folder so you will have access to all the things that were um, part of the presentation and then if you have any questions we hope that you type those in and then after the presentation if you still have questions about visual performing arts identification or services you can give us a call at the gifted advanced program office or um, send an email and we will be glad to answer those questions and thank you for tuning in